Dirty Sports episode 708. We are live on YouTube in five, four, three. Welcome to the Dirty Sports Podcast. I am your host, Andy Ruther, coming to you live from Cincinnati, Ohio, with my co-host from Palm Springs, California, Joey No Chill Prano. Hello, Andy. Good morning, Joe. How is Good morning? The, how is the desert? It's great. It's uh, it's a little bit cooler than than you normally travel to Palm Springs for, but it seems like it's warming up today. Yesterday, a rainy day in Los Angeles, a drizzly day in Palm Springs, but I spent yesterday evening drinking tiki drinks by by the pool at this uh, at this like tropical hotel down the street from where. We're staying, and today, getting up, doing dirty sports, getting out to the pool, a little golf tomorrow morning at Desert Dunes, and then uh, and then off to San Diego for the weekend, where Andy stand up comedy has returned. Although outside, I'm opening. Actually, I think I'm, I believe I'm hosting the shows because the opening spot was already filled. But hosting the shows for Eddie If this weekend. Been doing been doing some stand up lately, Andy. What's that like? It's, it's definitely strange to be doing it again, but I actually like this kind of moment where it can be very relaxed and I have my notes up there, you know, typically it's like the Jean Janine Garofalo types that are like, I have notes, even though I don't need them just so I can look like I'm some sort of book smart person. And, uh, but now like, you know, everybody just kind of getting back into it simultaneously to go up and riff and just like work shit out that I've been thinking about for months, but haven't had a chance to try. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I bet I was, I was realizing, so it'll be a year next week without performing for me. <clears throat> and, yeah. and I, I'm pretty sure I'm like a hundred percent sure. I think. I've since I since the first time I ever went on stage, which was 2004, I don't think I've ever gone a year. Like I've had lulls where like I didn't do stand up for six months, eight months. Yeah. But I've, I've never gone 12 straight months without doing stand up. Yeah. I would, I would, I'm thinking like we started in March, you know, ended in March last year and I didn't perform live until I think that was like, right around Halloween when I did that outdoor show. Yeah, October, I remember. Although, actually, I did did the patio show. Yeah, like, but even that was probably the longest in, like, a long time. But this feels different. It doesn't, it's not, like, patio show where I'm screaming without a microphone or performing to cars. I've now done two shows in the past week, one on an outdoor area but microphoned, and another... Uh, in this like big open garage situation. Um, and now this weekend there'll be more patios and it, yeah, feels good to be back. Yeah. I I'll be curious what I do. Um, I'll be honest. I haven't really missed it, but I wasn't going hard anyway, but um, I've but still, the, uh, the, I've the st- comedy, one of the comedy clubs that's there in Cincinnati is actually in Kentucky. Is that right? Well, the the long the main staple as far as the longevity is go bananas, which is actually close to where my little brother lives in an area of town called Montgomery. That's under renovation. I think they were smart, right? COVID was yeah. happening. You couldn't do shows. They're still renovating it. Now there's one, there's a funny bone, which was in northern Kentucky, which they relocated out, like out. It's like 35 miles away. You know what I'm saying? Like it's kind of out there. Still in Kentucky. No, that's in Ohio. Oh, okay, got in, it. In, in Liberty Township. Now that's been open. Uh, I don't think they're doing mics. Again, it's still very limited. Yeah. I'm sure as far as seating. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely got some stuff I want to work through. I think it's therapy, as we know, stand up. That's why we like doing it. So I got some, you know, some lovely topics like coping with death and uh, uplifting stuff. But with with my attempt to make it funny. But yeah, that's good, man. Pronouns. That's, we know you, we know you've been workshopping this pronoun bit. I have, and it, and it might suck. That's <laughs> that's what's so crazy about stand up. It might bomb, but um, I don't know, man. I, I'm trying to, and maybe I don't know if you feel this way. Like I think it's important to. We've been given 
almost a refresh button. What we have on life, it's it's the give zero fucks mentality I'm, I'm trying to have in my life in general. You know, if, if I do something that bombs or if I try something that doesn't work, you know, it's, it's trial and error. And yeah. uh, I mean, I, I, I'm definitely not one of those people. I don't take it too seriously in terms of like, oh, the art form of it or the therapy of it. I was like, I wasn't even sure I wanted to, you know, necessarily get back and like do it till it was things were happening. And then, you know, our boy Jonesy, friend of the show, uh, the two shows I've done so far were his. And I was like, yeah, I guess I'll try it. And then, you know, when you get back out and do it, you're like, ah, it's fun. It's fun to talk some shit. Yeah. So, uh, so if you're, if anybody's down in the San Diego area, Escondido grand comedy club in Escondido this weekend, I'll talk some shit and probably draw some raffle winners. I haven't hosted a real comedy show in a long, long time. Yeah. That would be good for you, man. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I mean, you said, but I do think it's therapeutic for us guys like us. I think it's our form of almost seeing somebody like it's, it's just going through that on stage is, is always cleansing. Now comedy's back and you know what else is coming back? Big banjo. I'm going to segue that way. That's right. He officially has resigned. We've discussed this at length. You and I both agree. You know, it doesn't make them Super Bowl contenders, but he is coming back officially as of the last hour. I, I guess the, the thing that helps is that there was some sort of renegotiation of his contract and cash deferments and whatever, and he's freeing up some money for them. But all that being said, I just don't like the simplest way to put it is I actually don't think specifically at the quarterback position with if everything else pans out if they if they sign some people with that money and if they fill some holes and if they get better at certain spots like i simply don't think they're strong enough at the quarterback position to contend for a super bowl and that's ben roethlisberger so and it's not like he had by the way he didn't have a bad year last year he had no like overall he had a pretty good year but he doesn't, I, I agree. I don't think he takes them to that next step to where they can make a Super Bowl. They started 11 and 0 and got smoked first round at home in the playoffs. Yeah. I also think that, and this is certainly not true of Ben Roethlisberger throughout his career, but I think certainly late career Ben Roethlisberger, it seems like he's turning into one of those feast on bad teams guys, not show up against good teams guys. Like, I just, you know, like the thing about Ben Roethlisberger at, at his age and at his quality, it's been a long time since he won three straight playoff games, four straight playoff games. Like we are pretty f far removed from the deep Super Bowl champs slash Super Bowl appearance like Pittsburgh Steelers with Big Ben. So I just look at him now and I go, is he winning four playoff games like Tom Brady did last year? And I don't think he is. Is he winning three if they were to somehow magically have a bye in the playoffs? I don't think he is. So I guess the, the Steelers were boxed in because what's their other option at this point? But at the same time, so many quarterbacks are on the move. So many quarterbacks want to be moved so many quarterbacks will be available should their team get one of the quarterbacks that move it just seems like uh, here's a question for you andy what who makes the steelers better short and or long term ben roethlisberger at this age or sam darnold well hmm. I think they win more now with Ben. Now they haven't been to a conference title since 2016. So it has been a minute. I do. I don't know what to make of Darnold like long-term. I just, I just don't know. I wasn't the biggest Darnold guy. I thought he turned the ball over too much at SC. He went from having a great year to more of a down year the year before his last year in college, before he was drafted. I think he's too turnover prone. I'm not the biggest Darnold guy. Me either. But, but he has had flashes 
with the Jets, and they're the Jets. And Ben, ben Roethlisberger certainly wouldn't be somebody that you would classify as not turnover prone. Okay, I'm gonna toss. I'm gonna toss out a few guys because this is a fun game, and you and I love our quarterback discussions, and we're gonna have a bunch today. And I'm gonna toss out a few guys and say, do they become Super Bowl contenders in your eyes if these guys are their quarterbacks next year? Derek Carr. I mean, they went 11 and 0 this year, so. Super Bowl contenders, could they make a Super Bowl? Yeah, I think they could. I guess the question should be, do they improve? Do you yes, like their I th- chances I they, better? I think they improve. Okay. I think they improve. You, you know, I, I mean, I guess I'm still a Derek Carr, like, truther to a, a little bit of an extent, but, like, I think Derek Carr is good. And I, I think, is he is he peak Big Ben? No, but neither is Big Ben now. So... I think current day Derek Carr is better than current day Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's a hot take. Dak Prescott. Yeah, I don't. Th- I mean, this is a fun game, but I also think there's like nine starting quarterbacks or seven starting quarterbacks that I would maybe not take over Big Ben right now, considering age and everything. Okay, so it sounds like you I just. Mean, I mean, the, the, the thing that you have going, obviously, if you're the Steelers is he, you don't have to change anything at all. You yeah. don't have to learn anything at all, but it's like the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, what if it is broke? <laughs> you went 11 and 0, and then you, you know, I mean, the state of the Steelers franchise when you're getting blown out by the punchline of your division or one of the two punchlines of your division in a playoff game, that's got to be, you know, the Steelers have a pretty great track record of never being down. That's got to be one of the low points. Oh, we still make the playoffs, but the Cleveland Browns massacre us. What's well, interesting. I, I, I'm going to pull from YouTube right now. I'm looking at some comments, but we have a Steelers fan chiming in. Joe Lucini. He says, a lifelong Steelers fan, Ben's arm never looked stronger than last year. There's no better options at this, at his, as far as like a lower price. Horrible offensive line play and no run game down the stretch. Now, they did have absolutely no run game, but I'll say this. He was getting the ball out quicker than he ever did. You know, I think you can debate his arm because he, he was doing a lot of quick slants, and quick passes, but I thought his arm looked tear like against the Browns in that game. I just thought, man, he looks he looks like he's old. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of guys I'd rather have. That's why I tossed out certain guys. I, I I just I don't know. I mean, obviously, money's such a factor, and I know we have we have Russell Wilson discussions on the on deck and. That, that's the stuff that you got to take into consideration. But, and I know, again, he renegotiated, but I like, let's do it, Andy. Let's say, let's, let's, let's go as deep as we can go and, you know, put ourselves uh, as much against the fire as we can as dirty sports, you know, in the history of dirty sports, a guy that we have thrashed is Jameis Winston. Are they better with Jameis Winston? I, like no. if, if no. you don't think so. No, I don't. I, I I think that's come on. Give give Ben something there. I I think he he just turns the ball over too much. You know. Well, there are a lot of discussions about these prices. Like the the I don't know where. Like that brings in the whole DAC discussion. You know where are they now? Like where are who now? The Cowboys. Because it, from ever, I read a lot on this, and apparently he wants something between a Russell Wilson deal and a Patrick Mahomes deal. So then I would tell him to fuck off entirely, and I'd draft another quarterback in the second round or whenever they got Dak Prescott and do it again. Like, that's the thing with Dak Prescott is find quarterback – but if you want that money, I don't I don't want anything to do with you. Once your once your cost exceeds your value, I'm out entirely. 
I guess that's the question. What is Dak Prescott's value? He's won a single playoff game. And again, it, it really does all come back to that. It's a team sport, but he's coming off a pretty brutal injury. I don't know, just the, th- the thought of him commanding somewhere in between that range is, I think it's pretty ridiculous. I do too, but also here I am, you know, with the Seahawks shopping Russell Wilson after saying them giving him that money was ridiculous. And every single person in the world saying Joe Prano is mentally ill and is some sort of Russell Wilson hater. You are a Russell Wilson hater. The bottom line is, I think, <laughs> I, think I think the money exceeds the value. The end. Okay, if, the, if you're the if you're the Cowboys, you're, you're you're Jerry Jones. Yep. Would you rather have Russell Wilson or Dak Prescott moving forward? Well, I'd rather have Russell Wilson if Dak Prescott wants Russell Wilson money because Russell Wilson's only got two years left on his Russell Wilson deal, and it's for twenty two million dollars or you know 19 and 21 million or something like that plus the 13 million dollars a year he has to get as some sort of bonus which i don't know how any team that is planning on trading him trading for him or how the seahawks are approaching teams that they are trying to trade him to are i don't know how they're all discussing this that he also has you know i believe it's like 26 million dollars sitting on the side that still has to be paid off as part of a bonus plan. But the bottom line is Russell Wilson's contract number is not, I believe 19 and 21 or 22 million for the last two years left. So yeah, I'm going to take Russell Wilson over Dak Prescott. If Dak Prescott wants the five year, six year, seven year deal that all these quarterbacks are getting that then you're hampered with, because the reason is two years, if you don't win, you figure it out again, as opposed to six years from now when the Cowboys become the Seahawks and go, well, we won nine games a lot of times, but we haven't won anything else because we can't afford to pay any other players because we're playing Dak Prescott $30 million. And now we've got to move him somewhere. You, you know, it's, it is crazy when you start looking at these numbers. I mean, even Mahomes, not, that he wasn't worth it because he was. But we all know how tight that, that the window is so small in the NFL. It's so small. People forget that. It is such a short window. We haven't had a team repeat since this Patriots 2003, 2004. Obviously, the Chiefs didn't repeat, right? Like you're going to see that in Kansas City too. Patrick Mahomes got so much money. There's, there is a finite amount of time with the budget constraints, well, what think, you can do. I think when you have a guy like, And this is sort of where Aaron Rodgers is angry about the drafting of Jordan Love is if you have a Patrick Mahomes type, if you have an Aaron Rodgers type, just protect him and play some defense and then go high in the draft on weapons for him. Don't worry about paying some big free agent to come play wide receiver or tight end with them. If you're the Chiefs, don't worry about, you know, keeping some of these receivers. Like Patrick Mahomes is going to make guys you've never heard of great receivers. So it's okay because you don't have to spend money on weapons. He's your weapon. But make sure you protect him and make sure you play some defense. And also, like I said about Aaron Rodgers, is make sure you, when you have draft picks, to spend them on young, cheap weapons that he can make great as opposed to spending them on a backup quarterback for your quarterback. Don't draft a quarterback in the first round when your quarterback needs young, cheap weapons. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. Uh... I'm not so worried about, you know, the chiefs not being able to re-sign like a McCole Hardman. Like you can get a track star out of college and Patrick Holmes will turn him into something. Sure. Yeah, I don't know, man. A lot of these, there's a lot of decisions that have to happen with a lot of teams. We still don't know what's going on in Houston with Deshaun Watson. And a lot of these decisions are going to have to be made before the. Is there a certain deadline coming up, like at the end of March? 
I don't know. I don't know, but I'll, I'll be curious, you know, how it plays out. I, I just, I keep seeing things in Seattle. I, I just don't know. I don't know where that situation is at. If it's as bad as people make it sound. Well, it's, it's just an hour ago now, right? That now the report is they're shopping him when it was like, we are, we absolutely aren't shopping him. Well, I, I saw the ESPN report on that Diana Rossini. She's claiming no. She was on Pat McAfee's show. She's, I mean, this is an hour ago. I was told the ESC Hawks are not shopping Russell Wilson, but calls from other teams inquiring have been answered. <laughs> so, I mean, what's the difference? They're not calling people. They're just accepting calls to them. It's like a... Yeah. It seems like semantics to me. Going to the Super Bowl. It, it, oh, sorry. It, it, it might be. We're not calling people about you, but if people call us about you, we're taught we're you know throwing out potential trade ideas. Yeah. This is where our social media sucks, man. Because I, I think I think to a certain degree, these these players, it's it just like it's the point of no return of you know, Deshaun Watson now maybe looks like Russell Wilson, you know, where there's so much stuff out there and everybody has so much access to this information. Whereas it was more hush hush in the past. You can't really repair that relationship. But again, I, I stand by what I said last episode. Like if I'm Russ, dude, I, you, it's worked. It's worked well enough in Seattle, man. Like, Trust me, you, you don't you don't know what you're getting when you go to these I, other teams. I completely agree with you, but I think that that part of that is it's worked so well in Seattle. You can't be vocal about the parts of it that don't work when you're almost as much responsible for that. Like, what do you? How are you just? How do you justify trashing your O line when you make a ton of money? So they can't pay an offensive lineman. You hold the ball too long. So you get fucking sacked. Like, dude, a lot of that blame on some offensive line issues is your fault. So maybe just don't go around trashing your own line. Well, I, I think, you know, Russ has been pretty tight lipped for the most part. But I think what's happening is he's, you know, He's de- he, he's married to a pop star. I think that comes into it. God knows how many people are in his ear. And, and I think Russ cares so much about the image and he's doing the GQ stuff and the social media and all that crap. So a diva. I, I think he's slowly turning into more of a diva. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. That's what I'm saying. Like you're seeing, you're, you're seeing the evolution. I don't even know if it's a diva, but you're seeing the evolution of a guy and I have no problem with the frustration. Look, we've seen it. We've seen frustrations, even with like an Aaron Rodgers. like we've seen it. Right. Um, but again, you, you've been in a good situation. Um, I think maybe the play calling could be better. Again, I think blame goes all the way around and that includes Russ himself, which maybe he's not looking in the mirror enough and thinking that and thinking that, Hey man, I'm just as culpable as, some players in my team or the coaching or the play calling all those things. And, and I just think the grass isn't always greener, you know, it's not always greener. Certainly not like with the options that you've thrown out there. Like I don't think the grass is greener in Dallas. No, I don't think the grass is greener in Chicago. I don't think the grass is necessarily greener in Las Vegas. I mean, look, is the, the grass greener in New Orleans? Maybe. But you talk about weapons and you talk about drafting. They drafted Metcalf. They drafted Lockett. They drafted Carson. Like you got all these weapons. They brought in someone like Greg Olson. Obviously, he's older, but, you know, a good veteran presence, which is also great but, for the but, locker room. Right. And also cheap. Exactly. And because that's why you can't. Sp- they, they didn't go out and they, they didn't go out and sign a big name wide receiver free agent because they're paying their quarterback thirty five million dollars a year. Yeah. And how do you have the Legion of Boom and big free agent signings as weapons and pay your quarterback that money? You don't. You can't. That's why you have none of them. Yeah. 
So that's why when I say Russell Wilson's overrated, that's what I mean. <laughs> but, but I, you know, that's, I still don't fully understand that. Like overrated in what sense? Overrated in the idea that let's just give Russell Wilson anything he, he wants and then it'll all figure itself out. Let's lock down the most important thing. Some would argue the proof is that at least in that system with your coach, with the way you guys want to play football, you're not the most important thing. Well, I think right now that's, that is the discussion within the Seahawks organization is does our game plan, which is run game defense, run game opens up the deep ball, all that is that bigger or more important than the one guy throwing the ball. And I think that's where they're button heads now. And, and I think, and here's what I'll say. I think anybody that's on the quarterback side in this situation is overrating Russell Wilson. I'll say this about Russ. He couldn't sustain at the level that he started the year. And he's got to look at that. So if he's still butthurt that they pulled in the reins on him, look, man, you were turning the ball over. Like it's as simple as that. Obviously I still like the guy. I wanted to be successful. Um, I like a lot of quarterbacks though. I, I think we're in a glorious age of QBs, a golden age, I should say. We discussed this. I love a lot of these guys. I'll be curious to see where they go, where Deshaun Watson goes. I'd love to see him somewhere else. Get him out of Houston. It's basically a hurricane. What was the big hurricane that hit? Harvey? I don't even remember. I've lost track. The big hurricane that hit a few years ago. That's basically what their organization is. It's a giant hurricane just destroying careers. And you see guys like DeAndre Hopkins who leave and are happier and they're still playing at a high level. That's what I want. I don't know. But Joe, the spring is here and, and you know, the sun is shining in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I know the Miller lights are flowing because people are excited. Baseball's, yeah. baseball's around the corner. You're in Palm Springs. I'm about know- to go have a couple ice cold ones by the pool. I've got some in, in my little mini fridge in my hotel room. That'll go directly into my minimal golf bag tomorrow for my, 7 a.m. tea time on the course. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's that time of year. It's yeah. always that time of year, but it's especially that time of year. It really is, guys. Miller Lite, it's the original light beer. It's always been about bringing you and your friends together for a time-honored classic. Miller Time. And I know you're enjoying Miller Time in Palm Springs. That sounds amazing by the pool. A nice, yeah, what's cold... Better? Miller Lite. Hot hot sun, warm, perfect, cold Miller Lite. Guys, you can enjoy Miller time too. Miller Lite, great taste with only 96 calories and 3.2 carbs. However, you and your friends are enjoying Miller time, you can have the original light beer delivered by going to MillerLite.com forward slash dirty sports and find the delivery options near you. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. So, yeah, guys, have it shipped if you don't want to leave your house or MillerLite.com forward slash dirty sports also shows you where you can get Miller Light in your area. So that's another option. If you like to get out occasionally, get away from your family, your kids, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is, you just want to go for a drive like I do sometimes, stop in the car. Go to millionlight.com forward slash dirty sports. Okay. We do have some updates on some of the financial stuff, which I always like because I'm a dork like that as far as NFL TV contracts. Okay. So whatever's going on with ratings is not affecting, which you and I knew. Uh-oh. Andy, I am shocked. The deals are going to be even bigger. Shocked. The equality on the back of the helmets has not derailed the entire NFL TV system. Colin Kaepernick and leading to many other players kneeling has not derailed. They're not now just getting offered hundreds of dollars instead of billions of dollars. No, and shocked Andy. And I mean, it's, it's going to go up a lot. No, this is all projection, but I'm reading right now the article today in the wall street journal. Fox 
which currently spends $1.1 billion per season, is expected to go up to $2 billion. So that's a, almost a 50% increase to $2 so billion. Go get woke. Go the richest you've ever reached. Is that the new saying? It doesn't rhyme, but I like it. Get woke. Get filthy, stupid rich. Well, I think that I think, but here's the thing, though. I know what you're doing. I, I will say the NFL is very, they're very strategic how they do that stuff. We've both noticed it. It's, it's not in your face like the NBA. It's not. Let's just be honest. It's very subtle. It's not on the floor. It's in the grass. So there's the grass is hiding it. A no, little but it, I mean, on the back of the, the quality in the end zones, it's not like the equality on the baseline. Technically, it's way bigger, but in per capita fr- foot. But of hold the- on, Joe, you have to admit it, it, it is the equality in the back of the helmet is very small. Like a lot of people aren't seeing that. I don't think they are. I'm just saying the NFL is very strategic on how they do it. Yeah, they're strategic in that they tried to stop it. It kind of blew up in their face. The, the players protested. Now it's basically accepted. Now, uh, you know, now commissioner is scolding people who are not talking about equality and sure. saying people whatever. So listen, one thing we all we know about the NFL is that the NFL is only cares about money. So they are going to yes. go. They're going to go whichever way the wind blows. Yes. And and, right? and, and that is a point. And, and the point is, is that the wind now blows in this. So the idea that this is the vocal minority and the masses really the masses are going to turn it off as long as these players are kneeling. Well, get woke, get the richest TV contract you've ever been offered in the history of professional sports and television. Well, I also think the long, NFL, it's a long hashtag, but I think we can make it work. But I also think I know I know you're going to keep going there and I know you're having fun with it. But but like my, my, I'm, I'm just viewing it as this. I, like I can take that out of it. It's, it's the NFL is king. The NFL is cash king. The NFL rules. And that's right. what and, it is. Yeah. And, and to me, it has nothing like like versus all the sports. And right. it just shows like but the my NFL point is, is unstoppable. every single person that's claiming they're going to stop watching. They didn't. They didn't stop watching. And Agreed. if they did, if they did stop watching that, their effect is so minimal that Amazon and CBS and NBC and Fox and whoever are like, we don't fucking care. We're going to pay you more than we've ever paid anybody. We want the football. We need the football. Yeah. Amazon's interesting, man. Amazon is uh, trying to be the sole provider for Thursday night football. And they're going to pay big bucks for that. And I kind of like it. I do because it's, it's, you know, we're headed to that. The streaming, the, the, the cable box, the direct TV, they're, they're kind of outdated. And if Amazon's willing to shell out for it, like, like I don't know many people who don't have prime. Who doesn't have Amazon prime at this point? I don't know. Like, like, where would we? I mean, it's true though. Who doesn't have Amazon Prime? Like, especially with COVID. You know, there's some conspiracies that Bezos. I think you started that, or I don't know if you read that somewhere. You know, what? Jeff, Jeff Bezos is is the man behind COVID because yeah. Well, he's certainly we all, he's certainly making money off of it. Oh my God! Can you imagine? I was talking about this with some family members the other day. Can you imagine 2020 without Amazon? Delivery when you couldn't go to the store or you didn't want to. Yeah. Can you imagine that? No, it's absurd. So now they're going to overtake football slowly, but surely Amazon's still overtaking everything. Like I'm, I am just, I'm trying to learn. You just got to accept it. Like, what are you going to do? They own whole foods. They own what you watch on TV. They're going to own football, Yeah. The, the delivery service, but Amazon is the big new player in this. ABC is also going to get a Super Bowl again. It looks like, you know, owned by Disney. So the money's there and people are paying it. And a lot of, a lot of Chinese money in Disney. So I assume that those 
I assume the people that are going after LeBron will soon be going after the NFL and ABC and their partnership with Disney. So, you know, we, a lot of things to come. Oh, oh no, no, I'm hearing no. I'm hearing in my ear. No, that they, 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 they will not. That's a good point. Though. I will agree with you on that. It goes back to the Andy Ruther. We're all pieces of shit, aren't we? Just accept it, people. Just accept it. Uh, yeah, that is true. A lot of Disney money going in. So I don't know, but uh, look, I'm all for it. If, if people want to pay this money, if they make it easier to watch games, I'm all for it. Now, there's so much money coming in. I'm also all for taking care of players, right? When they retire. Come on, NFL. Give them some benefits. The money's Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And, and we see these guys, and I don't know, you know, guys go crazy. I, I have to mention it. The, so many dirtballs DM me. Former guest of the show, the worst guest ever, Kellen Winslow Jr. Thank God we had him on on the phone right and not in person can you imagine there's pictures of us him squeezed in between us on the smut couch <laughs> that would have been bad well we got a 14 year prison sentence for multiple rapes and sexual assaults and uh like everything you and i saw this coming lawyers claiming cte this is gonna be the new move man it should be the new move. It's, honestly, I said that if OJ happened today, that's absolutely what they'd claim. They'd be like, he did it, but it was CT. Yeah, it seems to be the move now that they're just. Uh... But like the thing is, is, you know, there's there's part of the crimes that Kellen Winslow committed, which is like you don't just start. <laughs> sexually assaulting the elderly yeah because he got ct so obviously the guy's got serious problems but at the same time like the ct thing i mean look at all of these guys who are killing themselves and whatever like it's it's clearly has a very serious effects on a lot of these guys yeah that goes beyond it's about legacy you know, whoa whoa their, whoa whoa wow. did you hear that oh no now we're going into something else why is it doing that we're going into Kanye. And now YouTube has canceled our stream. Canceled, canceled, canceled. <laughs> like you can't play a Kanye song on your show. I wasn't trying to, man. It just jumped. It just Although jumped. I did, it did make me think about the potential of Kanye sampling. It's about legacy. Yo. I mean, when is a rapper going to take it's about legacy? Yo. Put it in a, in a jam. I agree. I mean, I mean, that is a, uh, that's an all-time 30 sports classic. When we finally put together the compilation of, of rapping Andy Ruther tracks, I think the whole album should be called It's About Legacy, yo. Yeah? Get Legacy, legacy yo, yo, or Die Trying. What was that, What was that, Kellen? What did you say? I won't play. Dude, never mind. I'm, you know, this is where we need a producer. It's just, it's just not working. It's about Legacy, yo. There he is. <laughs> and your legacy is uh, pound me in the ass. What, what do they say in office space? I have no idea what you're going for right pound now. Pound me in the ass prison. Dude, he's, he, he's, a, he's a sick man, though. It, it, and all jokes aside, 14 years. Come on. That's all? That's all? Like, he's raping old women, homeless women. A girl passed out. When she was 17, like that, that the plea deal is 14 years. The Cowboys already have a workout on their Google calendar for 2035. They're like, well, let's just see what he's got left in the tank. <laughs> and they're paying 52 year old Russell Wilson $75 million after they traded him for Jack. <laughs> Unbelievable. You want to hear something crazy that I read when I was reading about all this? At one point, after he had a Pro Bowl season, Kellen Winslow Jr. was the highest paid tight end for like a year or two in the NFL. Yeah. Talk about it. It's about legacy. I mean, he couldn't be more right, though. It is about legacy. Yo. Like the dude got the dude 
li- basically lived off his dad's legacy. Yeah, that's true, man. He really did. Yo. It's about my dad's legacy, yo. God, you know, I never thought about what about him being like, like you are so right. Thank God there's no photos out there of him like sandwiched between us. Like I and Aaron or whoever's our intern ready to just pounce on them after the show. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say it. Never mind. It's going to get us. <laughs> going to get us canceled. Should I say it? No. Should I say it? I don't. I, whatever it is, I think. Yeah. I'm not, not. I'm not going to say it. God, I'm going to say it. Jeez. God forbid he met Dr. Margaret two doors down from me. Oh no. Oh, I'm just, no. I'm that's, just saying that's he's, terrible. I, I know it's terrible. He's a sick individual. He's he's demented. The man needs more than 14 years in prison. He sees a soaking wet Nick coming out of the shower with a cheese stick in his hand. Dr. Margaret walking down the halls. Oh man, man. Oh unbelievable. Imagine, catch, imagine ca- caught a glimpse of EJ. <laughs> Oh, and he loves homeless people. Imagine him in Venice. Yeah. Bro, that's like porn for him. Walks across the street to the boardwalk. Which, by the way, is is like its own. You, I've seen you and I have seen stuff. The yeah. boardwalk is now. Just out of control. Oh, complete and utter disaster. Although I'm going to have to visit it when I when I come out. We'll have to check it out. Yeah, we'll go for speaking, a walk. Speaking of another sick individual, Joe, that's a great segue. To Mickey Calloway, your former Mets oh, manager. Man, holy cow, man! This guy, Dick Pick Mick. Did you ever read the thing I sent you, or the thing that had it laid out on the Athletic? Yes. Holy shit, man! This guy has been doing this. Like, I don't even know how he managed from from that report. He basically his whole focus all day was getting laid. And texting with girls and harassing women. And it, it was just non it's like a 24 hour cycle of just sex, 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 aggressive, aggressive assault. Like. I look forward to him in front of, uh, you know a reclaimed wood background with his laptop out going like, listen, I was obsessed with sex and uh, didn't take away from the fact that I was still the manager of the Mets and the pitching coach of the Indians. (laughs) But all, all of my, all of my relationships were consensual and yeah, all, you know, I sent a lot of DMS. The Crystalia reference for anybody who didn't catch it. (laughs) But but it's crazy. Like he, like he got that one woman. If you read the article, he's nice to her and the kid, and then he starts an affair with her. Now, but it's it's just it was just consuming him, and everybody knew, and the Indians knew, and the Indians lied. Yeah. And then it looks like everybody's lying, right? The Mets, the Angel. It's like, well, and- I mean. Yeah. And I'm, and by the way, I'm not here to defend the Mets by any means, but like, you know, the, the Mets defense in the hiring was that the Indians lied, was that the Indians lied, but also that they, but also that they panic hired a guy because they wanted him. So, and it's like, that's just typical Mets where you're, we're talking about like the pitching coach of the Indians. Yeah. The, first of all, the Indians didn't win the world series. You know, and and they had they had, you know, uh, certain guys who were you know, absolutely dominant in that season. And we act like the Met, the Mets can't even be bothered to, like, go sniffing down it because they're in a bit. They, they want him signed before he even talks to the Phillies. And you're like, Jesus, guys. I mean, if you had the nickname Dick Pick Mick. Everybody knew. Yeah. 
I, 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 I try to understand that. Like I try to understand as far as not agree, but like, you know, get my head into somebody like that. And, I, and, and it's tough for me, like when it just consumes you and I have episodes where like, you know, you get all sexual or it consumes you for like a day or like a few hours, but like where it's running. I mean, they were saying he'd be, he'd be DMing and texting with girls an like, hour before games. I was just going to say that like right before a Mets game yeah. when he should be working on the lineup or roster moves or whatever it is. And, and also you're like, what, you know, you have a wife, what like, and it's apparently the report is everybody under the sun. You know what I mean? Like not, he didn't care about age. He didn't care about looks. He didn't care Race. about anything. He just, yeah. he's just nonstop. He's just like yeah, a yeah. machine gun. He's just yeah. machine gunning texts. That, that was a great part of the article. It said that he didn't focus on race, age, whatever. It was just like, I'm just trying to get laid, man. Yeah. No. But then also it begs the question, like, you know, was he or was like there was was all of this just a part of it, too? Is he obsessed with just like the messages and the whatever? I mean, I feel like you're you're more into the uh, I am apps over the years than I am. Um, I have spent almost no time on there, but it seems like a lot of people. Their thing is just like carrying on a bunch of these conversations, but never actually meeting up with people or whatever. And you go, who are you people that like want to spend your whole time, like flirt texting people from Bumble? Like, does that, is that really exciting? Well, look, I, I, here's the thing with that. I actually, I, I could vouch for some of this stuff. I, I think sometimes if you've already had sex with somebody, this could sound crazy. So like sometimes if I don't want to deal with somebody or the other things that, you know, normally it's not just sex, right? We don't like, we agree. Like it's, it's very hard to find just something that's purely sexual. It is rarely. Can you just have sex with somebody and then leave? It's just, it's just feelings and it's emotions and those things come involved. I have found myself at times with girls that I have hooked up with, like, let's say, Hey, we're going to dirty text and I don't feel like dealing with her. And then I'll jerk off and then I feel better. And then I'm like, cool. Yeah. But, but it, I mean, but, that's but, but I think, it, it but, seems like Mickey Calloway is almost just as, but that's what I was going to say. But I think that's with all of that. than he is with like, I mean, he's on the road, like, you know, is he doing the thing like was are all the messages on it? Like, you know, I hate to go back to the Dalia thing, but like, is that the thing he's like messaging people that he met when he was in Denver the last time and trying to meet up with somebody in Denver again? Or is he just like obsessed with the carrying on via his phone? I mean, that's a great question, I, which like, by, which I think that's actually worse. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you have a baseball team to run. Stop dirty texting people. No, I agree. I for sure. Look, man, I like I, I have a binge personality, as you know. Like I can be very all into something. And and I've been there with girls or with sex. Um, but nothing to this, you know, and, and, and it's actually like I've, you know, normally it's gonna be having sex with them or with multiple girls or whatever. Like th this is like, you're saying this is all consuming 24 seven. It also, it's such a, it's such a weird world we live in now. We're also like, it's not illegal to be a creep. Like, can you like Mickey Calloway is like suspended, probably going to get fired for being a creep basically. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. That's, that's, because that's like, a good point, dude, because like you're not like he, you know, you, the whole the whole athletic article is this guy keeps trying to get in touch with the Indians because Mickey Calloway slept with his wife. But like she slept with Mickey Calloway. Yeah. Now he did something. You know, he sent uh, look, I, look, he sent unsolicited totally, pictures. Totally. And he I'm, did. A, first of all, I, like, listen, I'm a Mets fan. He was our manager. I wouldn't want him to be our manager at all. And I certainly wouldn't, I certainly would be like, Oh, I hope we fire him. If this comes out when he's our manager, 
But my point is, again, in terms of like the canceling of people and all this stuff, like there's there's canceling, you know, everybody's crying nonstop about cancel culture, cancel culture. I mean, the Dr. Seuss thing was so funny to me. Like people are crying, but it's like they made that decision. You know what I mean? Like there's so many levels, I I agree levels to this stuff. Well, that's how I felt about the Dr. Seuss thing, too. They they made the decision. No, but I think but also like, you know, my point is, is like. Well, Mickey Calloway, if, if teams go, we don't want like some creepy guy who's obsessed with sexting people in our organization. He's not canceled. Right. But but, but there's I, but also but there, he's not doing anything illegal. Sure. Well, there's there's also there's levels to this. And, and, and that's that's where that's my problem with culture in general now. Right. Our society. Right. We, we want to lump all things together, whether it's like sexual or racist or whatever. like you, you just can't do that. We just talked about Kellen Winslow Jr. This guy's a serial rapist. Serial. Then there's Mickey Calloway, who's sending inappropriate dick pics, always caring about sex. He's saying inappropriate things to women. Look at that spectrum I just said. Oh, but l- let's let's just talk but people, about but, but yeah. people try, you see what I'm saying people try to lump all let's, that together. You can't lump those lump, two together. But here's what's here's what's amazing is let's lump a third story just from today into the mix. Mickey Calloway is suspended. Kellen Winslow is in jail. Kellen Winslow very clearly broke many laws. All right. There's probably something in there that Mickey Calloway did that was not. I don't know what the laws are on sending unsolicited pornographic things to people. I don't, I don't do that. So I don't have to look up the laws. Yeah. So I don't know the, I don't know the laws with that stuff. Is any of that illegal? I don't know. The bottom line is those are two very different ends of a spectrum, right? One guy is a creep and maybe borderline illegal. Another guy is a serial rapist in between Ben Roethlisberger just re-signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Good point. And we talked about this last episode. He's a lot closer to what Kellen Winslow has been accused of than he is what Mickey Calloway has been accused of. A lot closer to the, that end of the spectrum. Yeah. No one cares. He's re-signed. It doesn't matter. Mickey Calloway's not being charged with anything. He's being accused of stuff. And rightfully, I wouldn't want him to be a part of my organization. I'm glad he's no longer part of my organization. But he's not separated from the angels at this point because of an ongoing criminal investigation. Yeah. A a Steelers fan would be like, Ben Roethlisberger wasn't charged with anything. Okay, neither is Mickey Calloway, right? And and your point, which is... I wouldn't want anybody, any of these people involved in my team. Which is a fair point is Ben Roethlisberger still has a job, multiple sexual assaults, claims, whatever happened. Mickey Callaway's never been accused to our knowledge, right? Of sexual assault. And he's not working. And, yeah, I'm, not def- and, I'm, and I'm not saying that he should be working. But sure. I'm, saying, I'm saying none of these guys should be working. Yeah. And, and, and again, the point is just lumping all this crap together. Like there but are that's, di- that's where we talk about the hypocrisy of it. Like, you know, if you're going to rate, you know, if you're going to be a person who makes this your whole thing, like then how in the world is Ben Roethlisberger not still on your target list? Well, yeah. Uh, again, I, I think it's, you know, I've said this, like once you start, trying to lecture people on this stuff dude, dude you could you could you break down every layer i, mean, I want to know where our steelers fan in the comments has to say <laughs> he's like well his arm's still looking better than ever yeah man it's 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 a crazy time we live in because of this stuff and and there's there's no differentiating between different people and different acts and that's a major problem. It's a major fucking problem. And, and I can't. You, and let me ask you something, Andy. Do you think that this is a baseball thing versus a football thing versus no a, sports thing? 
I, I think these guys do whatever the hell they want. So you, do you do you think if Mickey Callaway was the offensive coordinator of an NFL team, he'd already be suspended? If it came out, yeah. The whole the same exact story. Dick pick Mick. But just instead of pitching coach for the Angels, he's offensive coordinator for the Rams. You think he'd already be suspended? I think so. What do you think? I don't know. Sometimes it seems like the NFL doesn't hold people to the same standards. As in it's easier? Like it's easier to get off? Yeah. It's easier, or it's certainly easier to get a second chance. Yeah. I don't know. But I think this is rampant. Yeah. We, you and I both know firsthand with people and having people we know, like this shit is rampant in the locker rooms and within sports organizations and the machismo with men and, and we're in entertainment and in enter- the entertainment business and in every other business and in the barista business. business. Yeah. And in restaurants and in club promoters and in sports business and in, you know, lawyering and in whatever and in politics, obviously it's like, and I think that's important to know. And recognize that, you know, sex is sex is like one of the main components of life and, and sexual stuff is it's, it's always going to be there. Um, but it, it is interesting that people kind of get lost in that and how all these things, I mean, it's, it's like, I think about stuff in that, like, it's crazy. Like st- stuff from different jobs i'm just saying like i'm thinking of like people hooking up with people and bosses and people like it's nuts i mean also like the unsolicited dick pick you know i'm working with eddie if this weekend you know how many times he sent me that guy sitting on the edge of the bed i mean that's an unsolicited dick pick. it's not his that, that guy will never get old by the way <laughs> but it's like it that's what it is I just got sent an unsolicited. What is that guy's name? Do we know his name? He has a name. I, I saw one because it was so cold here in the month of February. Somebody sent me one here. It was like, it's so cold in Cincinnati. And and the picture of his, he's sitting in the bed. There's no dick. Yeah. Like, like it's just completely shrunk because it's so cold. That guy got us through COVID though, man. Shout out to that guy. Like I had numerous text exchanges with that guy from family to friends. I mean, that guy, did he not save COVID? I've heard, I heard he was dead. He right? is dead. He is. Oh, dead. wow. Rip that guy. You don't find that stuff as funny as me. I mean, sometimes it's funny. Like, you know, it's, it's funny when it's like clever, not like the, like uh, the, at this point, tired is the like hey there's a co you can get the covid vaccine in your neighborhood it said they said you know they're giving it away to all 40 something year old white guys here's the link and you're like dude I, i'm not even gonna click this link i know what the picture i know what this is gonna open this is stupid yeah i'm talking about the creative photoshops man yeah oh he's wearing a mask oh he's you know it's no there, there's some good ones man I, I think you're kind of be honest. I think you're being a little disrespectful right now. I'm about to cancel you for trying to act like some of these aren't hilarious. But I also, I dude, I'm a, I am a child at heart. I laugh at the most stupid, juvenile, ridiculous things. And you're just—I'll like, tell you who else thinks they're funny. Mickey Calloway. He loves them. <laughs> Did you just put me on Mickey Calloway's level? No, I'm just saying, he definitely loves that. He definitely loves that meme. Yeah, you're probably right. All right, well, let's get to some Dirtball calls. Before we do that, Dirtballs, quick reminder, send in those iTunes reviews, leave your Twitter or Instagram handle, and I will send you some koozies. Had some very uh, nice reviews in the last week. I'm going to get those koozies out. And I even made a total mess up. I got koozies returned in my mailbox this week. I'm like, oh, I didn't put on enough, sto- enough postage. 
No, that envelope, I put on zero postage. I don't know what was going on in my head that day. Just zero postage. Just thought I could mail it with nothing on it. Uh, But yeah, we got some calls. 310-359-8365. I like this first call a lot. I can't wait to hear your reaction on this. Ruther Prano, it's your boy Double D, formerly from Indianapolis. Calling uh, because that time, it's that time of year. Uh, wanted to get your take on ketchup. Where does it rank in terms of sauces? Personally, I think it's towards the bottom. Uh, if I'm at a ballpark with a hot dog, give me mustard, give me relish, give me onions. If I have uh, eggs, I'm putting fresh tomatoes and, and maybe hot sauce. Uh, when it comes to fries, I don't know, maybe Chick-fil-A sauce, maybe something else. Overall, I just think it's relatively immature, and there's better choices. If you're if you're the kid, I mean, you're 12 years old if you're dunking chicken tenders and ketchup, right? Thanks for taking the call, guys. Stay dirty. You, you know, I, I will have to say, I'm going to hop in real quick. I think this is one of the best calls because I agree, like 100%. Well, I, I want I, – I think the question's even flawed. I think I think you're almost I, – I think he's even giving too much credit to ketchup just to even call it a sauce. It's not a sauce. Ketchup is a condiment. And I don't even like Nestle. So, it's, you know, it's, it's funny that this happened. But yesterday I went to this tiki bar and they had happy hour and they had a bunch of different things on the menu uh, for for happy hour food. And I said, what what are the happy hour like noshes do you recommend? And the guy's like, I know this is going to sound crazy, but you got to try our chicken fingers. And I was like, really? Like, they're good. They're not like these fat breaded like things. He's like, dude, they're good. The breading's like legit. It's golden brown. Like, all right, give me those. Give me the chicken fingers. I go, what kind of sauces do you got? And he's like, you want just like, an, you just want like my, you just want a gang bang of sauces. And I was like, yeah. So he comes out and he's like, all right, this is barbecue. This is our Buffalo. This is teriyaki. This is Thousand Island. He's like, you got ketchup here. I was like, why are we even doing this? What you, honey mustard. Okay. I was like, ke- this like, why would you even bring me ketchup? Yeah, I agree. That's not even a sauce. So, um, listen, I like ketchup on a burger. I do. I like ketchup on a burger. Sometimes I do uh, ketchup and mustard on a hot dog. I think I think when in when in desperate need, most of the time I eat French fries. I don't even put ketchup on them. You know what? I was gonna say that I never do. I rarely do. I don't even know why I own ketchup. I did it recently. I went to this place. Uh, I basically own ketchup for burgers. Look, it's 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 pretty good on a burger, but a lot of times, even on that burger, it's not just ketchup, right? I'm right. putting ketchup and mustard or ketchup and mayonnaise. Yeah, you know, I'm doing a combo. I mean, I couldn't agree more. Like ketchup, ketchup with the fries is lame. It really is. I rarely, I, yeah, do I that. Mean, I'd rather I'm have not, them plain. I'm not the biggest fry guy generally. But I think it's because, like, I don't like a poor quality fry. I won't just, like, take a poor quality fry and, like, shove it in some ketchup. Now, if I order something someplace and it comes with fries and the fries are bad, yeah, I'll dunk them in ketchup to, like, make them tolerable. But if your fries are good, I'm not even going ketchup. So, listen, I'm not here to slander ketchup because I think it's, like, it it does its role. You know what I I mean? But I think the point of the call. It's the weak hitting second baseman that can feel pretty good, but like somebody's got to play second base. You know what I mean? I think his point was, and I get it that there's still too many people who are putting ketchup yeah, I put with ketchup their, on my ketchup and you know, yeah. With their, I think I, chicken, I almost, like, like, dude, if you're doing chicken fingers with ketchup, like what you got to reevaluate your life. No, man. that's yeah. That's I can't even imagine like you, re, but there, but that's my point. Poultry and ketchup seems like the weirdest thing. Mikey used to do that. Mikey used to like throw like ketchup on it. It was like turkey. And I was like, what are you doing? Oh, I'll tell you. And I might need Mikey to call in because Mikey's a pretty big ketchup guy. But I wonder if he's outgrown that. Um, I know he listens to the show these days. I wonder if he's outgrown the ketchup thing now that he's, you know, more of a home chef or if he's You're like still, now that he's 40. <laughs> yeah. Or if he still messes with ketchup. But, um, you know, like I'll say sometimes every once in a while, a ketchup on an egg sandwich. I'll do it every once in a while. So 
I always have bad ketchup because I'll get it. I, I do this problem all the time. I'll buy it. And I'll be like, you know, in case whatever, I might need it. It always goes bad because, and it, by the way, ketchup lasts at least like a year. It goes bad because I'm never using it. Or I don't yeah. have people. So let's say like I just picked up some, uh, some meatloaf that you heat up from Trader Joe's, right? Like there's an example where I'm using ketchup. They never usually put enough on it. I'll add some of their ketchup with some hot sauce on top of the meatloaf. But hot dogs, dude, I'm mustard, man. Maybe ketchup and mustard, most likely just mustard. Yeah. It, 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 he is right. I think it's the eight it's, hitter in your lineup. It's for children. It's the David Eckstein, Eckstein, what was his name? I mean, David Eckstein won it. Let's not, let's not slander World Series MVP David Eckstein. I'm not was, here to slander ketchup, but I'm also. Was that the, was that the uh, 2002 against the Giants? Yeah. To be fair, I was in Spain. I missed basically all that World Series. Who's another good one? Because I, I, I like where you're going with this. You know, he's for the ketchup's Fernando Vina. Like, Ooh, that's good. You know, just a random fielding, no hitting second baseman. Yeah, that's ketchup. That you're like, I gotta play him. I gotta hit him. But I, but you know, my leadoff guy is Buffalo, and you know, teriyaki is hitting two. Obviously, you know, like a honey mustard and a th- like all these other condiments are in your you're in your lineup but you gotta you know catch us in there somewhere you know what sauce is just really elevated for me in the last year it's just any chipotle sauce chipotle the restaurant or like a, a chipotle based sauce a chipotle based sauce yeah that's not my fave Ooh. yeah there's this chicken sandwich place that opened up this summer in cincinnati which I love. And they, they do some like it's it's good. But uh but you know, people I, like like he said, oh uh, uh like a Chick-fil-A sauce. It's like, well, that's very specific. You know what I mean? The Polynesian sauce at Chick-fil-A, bomb as hell. But like I'm talking about standards, things that you can get, you know, wherever. Also, you know, hitting seven just above uh catch up is like the people are just like ranch on everything you're like bro i don't eat what's with the what's with this ranch i like ranch but not especially in california they're just like yo when in doubt ranch it ranch with fries is good ranch with pizza crust is good i i would be i'm definitely a bigger fan of ranch than i'm a ketchup all right i'm getting hungry let's let's get to another call going on boys Kyle Aronofsky calling back once again from beautiful Tom's River New Jersey home of the 1998 Little League World Series champions I'm wondering you know you guys talk a lot about the cancel culture obviously and uh since you're both woke now um one fan supposed fan I uh, wanted to know what you guys think about like COVID canceling um it popped to my mind because Andy you mentioned that you went and saw some friends you know you, you crossed state boundaries and went to go see some friends um, so a lot of people, you know, if you posted something on Instagram or, you know, a, maybe a disgruntled listener would, would try to cancel you for that. Like, oh, wow, nice job. You know, this shit's still serious. You can kill your grandma. Like, what do you guys think about that? Um, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not innocent. I, for football Sundays, I went to my buddy's house and I'm with like four or five guys usually. You know, we're not making out or anything anymore. Um, but just want to know what you think about that. I think it's pretty fucking silly. Um, you know, people got to make their own decisions in this. And, you know, we're all chipping in as much as we can. But if you want to go to your buddy's house and, you know, go see some friends, that's important to, uh, you know, keep your keep your mental health, right, Ruth here? Um, yeah, that's it. I feel like I know where you guys are going to stand on this, but it still seems like a good topic. Later. Yeah, I don't like, like, I don't like this. Like, I, I don't mean, like I, people. Well, here's what I'll say about people. Uh like, I be careful about what you put on social media. I'd say that. Like, when COVID was in some of the height as far as the spread, you probably felt this way, Joe. And I go on Instagram and I'd see somebody with like eight to 10 people out. In my own head, I'd be like, you're kind of an asshole. I mean, yes, I agree with you, but here's the thing. Like, but I'm not going to cancel I, somebody. I think I think what it is is again, just be reasonable. You're just as much of an asshole, you know, if you're if you're policing the internet 
and and calling people out as you are if you're you know the person that's trying to go into Ralph's without a mask on and demanding to speak to a manager. Like, I agree. We we go we we come back around again to the horseshoe political theory where like the two ends are way closer than they you know they everyone's so divided where meanwhile the divide is between you lunatics on the fringes and us normal people in the middle like i go i question this stuff every day in terms of like what's safe for me what's safe for other people what's safe for you know like doing comedy you know we're back to doing comedy and it's outside but i don't know what the table situation is going to be like till i get there and i don't know what the you know how what's the mask policy what's the th- thing so first things first is like i'm trying to keep myself safe and then i'm trying to keep people that i deal with safe now am i going to do like first of all like this is a great example like this show is going to happen this weekend whether i'm there or not now am i going to go all willy-nilly like like none of this is a thing and then go on and just start going and hanging out with my friends no i don't do anything like what am i doing you know i'm pretty much self-contained yeah in my home in my room, in my hotel room, you know, on a golf course with, you know, two other dudes, three other dudes. It's like, I'm not working somewhere. I'm not doing things. I'm not going a lot of places and seeing a lot of people. So like, would I go to a comedy show this weekend and then go visit my grandmother in a nursing home? No, that's, that would be, that would be pretty reckless. Sure. But you know, at the same time is like, I'm not going out there going like, and again, we, we go all the way back to the beginning of this people yelling about people protesting when you're not, allowed, I thought we weren't supposed to get into big groups. And it's like that. It's like, yo, some of the shit is bigger than other shit. Like that's a reason to go out and be outside. So it's like, you know, I just, well, think- I, I'll be honest. I, I don't agree there. I, I, I think, I think the the point on a lot of that, that stuff was, that the government was saying you couldn't mingle or you shut down your business, but protesting was fine, which I agree. Like that's, that doesn't make well, sense to me. Obviously it wasn't fine. They were tear gassing people. So what well, they weren't like, Oh, it's fine. <laughs> like, and also those, well, were the groups, and also that was the, the group of people that was like, you know, masked and believed and whatever. I mean, I mean, look, that's a whole other discussion. We probably don't agree. It seems on some of that stuff and that's fine. Um, just, you know, my take always is be smart. I agree. Don't police. Um, you know, you, you, you have to, you have to do what's best for you, for your family. Like me going to visit friends in St. Louis in a controlled environment. Exactly. Is, you know, is me in a car driving five hours. It's like, um, but you know, you know, we're all going to view these things differently, right? Like, like I haven't, I haven't, my, my, the Ruther family, as far as myself, the nephews and nieces and my brothers and sister-in-laws, we haven't all gotten together since my dad's funeral. So there's a reason because of that, right? Like we haven't, because of COVID, we had not get together for Thanksgiving for Christmas. Um, cause there's six, there's 16 of us. That's a lot of people and there's people at risk in my family. So Look, just live your life. Look, I look. I don't want to jinx it, but I think we're. I, I think there's light at the end of the tunnel here, and and I'm feeling I'm feeling optimistic. I don't know about you, Joe, but like I really am, and I think most of us will all be vaccinated by the end of June. So it's looking that way. So I know it's not easy, but my advice would just be: Bill Gates will know where we all are all the time, and where we are is at home watching football on Amazon. <laughs> I, I did call somebody out at Target the other day. Some some dipshit had his mask. Not even on his chin, like here. And I said, uh, I said, you know, the mask is supposed to go over the face, right? He, he just laughed. But I called him sir first. See, I, I throw I throw a nice. I mean, again, it's it's all the way, thing. It's like, I'm not even going to like whatever, but it like we could get into the whole, you know, we could go down a whole shabelli wormhole of, you know, how much mask works, how much that, like, what are we talking about? Like, it, it's not that hard. Yeah. Look, man, I, I'm, I'm not, it, it's just kind of like when you do that, you're just kind of like going like, I just, just disregard 
people like like and like the whole nonsense of like this is how they get you first they get you to wear masks then they get you to you know like the, i i'm not even i'm not even like crazy enough to to joke about like what they say is next first they get you to wear masks then they get you to all wear the same uniform like you're like okay whatever then they get you to stop at stoplights first they get you in masks then they get you to stop at stoplights then they get you for you know they get you complying to other randomly asserted government things next thing you know they got you wearing pants in public okay they already got me wearing pants in public look i i think we're all we all have fatigue from this and i'm trying not to get annoyed with people obviously like i said I, I called somebody out there at target but it wasn't angry it was me making a joke um but it's also like why is it hard for that guy? like why you know what that's just a that's just a look at me thing too that's just a look at me that's just wanting trouble that's all you want you want trouble yeah that. you want the, you you're karen i agree you want, you want somebody to talk to you I, I think I, I do agree. I think by putting it there versus not even wearing one, it, 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 you bring even more attention on yourself. No one in the history of this year has ever called somebody out because for a moment they felt like they needed a whatever and they pull their mask down for half a second to get air through their nose and put it right back on and go back right to what they're doing just for like the sake of it. But like if you're walking around with it hanging from your ear just to prove a point, you're just a Karen too. Yeah. The sides again, the sides of this are so close. What I'm hoping is on, on a positive note that we have another roaring twenties like we did after the Spanish flu and people were going out and they were having fun and they're partying and they're having sex. You know, maybe we'll have that again. Maybe we'll just have a giant worldwide orgy in 2022. Mickey Calloway's like send pics. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. I'm in. Kellen Winslow I, knocking on the door. I'm here for the worldwide gangbang. <laughs> Remember when he looked exactly like Todd Phillips in, that, <laughs> in his court appearance? He did. He, remember, remember when he went that look? Hi, I'm here for the worldwide gangbang. <laughs> I'm here for the Roaring Twenties worldwide gangbang. Kellen went up, get back in your cell. What are you doing? I do, here? I do love like what these lawyers say. Like, okay, you had a shaved head. You look like a lunatic in the NFL. No, I want you to look like a 45 year old Jewish man. Can you can you give that look in court to confuse the victims? All right, we're going to end with, you know, it's kind of been a dirty episode. I know we're not dirty anymore, but we've talked about a lot of dirty things, Joe, uh, a lot of sexual things. We're going to end with a, a, a dirty sexual, uh, straight up sexual. Oh, no, here we go. Well, the turtle story inspired it. Oh, boy. Joe, Andy, um, Jay, your Minnesota farmer dirt ball. We're talking about s savage stories. I don't know if it's savage or just stupid, but. My 22nd birthday, I had a party bus, and uh, a bunch of kids, like, kind of fell asleep. And Well, one kid threw up and then fell asleep, and I was kind of slighted because I didn't throw up. It was my birthday. What the fuck? You know, you're going to drink too much booze and throw up on my birthday? I don't, I, I don't do that. And I mean, I, I tried my best, but I didn't. Anyway, I was slighted by this kid doing that, so once he got back to his place and fell asleep in my kitchen, uh, everyone was kind of hanging out and I put my nutsack on his forehead. Um, yeah, I don't know. Stay dirty. <laughs> that was the end of the story. Uh, I don't know. Stay dirty. Canceled. Mickey Calloway is like, did anybody get a picture of that? <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Calloway. He's the, you know what Mickey Calloway is? Mickey Calloway is the original picture. It didn't happen. <laughs> Mickey Calloway's the meme of the guy looking around the corner. He's just always like, "Yeah, but you got you got pics." Oh, we we all know that guy. We all know the guy who what passes out. No, or the we guy, all know the the guy who's like, "Yo, man, let me see those pics." Oh like, yeah, like, like there's that one friend who's like, "Yo, let me see." Like if you're like, "Hey, man, this girl sent me some crazy pics." Yo, let me see those pics. 
You're like, dude, take it, take, take, take it easy, man. Give me my phone back. Um, what, like that was, you know, that um, do I, am I supposed to have a reaction? It's, I don't know. I just wanted so, to play. So, it. I mean, about- sounds pretty standard for like. 20 somethings in 2003 but i'm still i'm glad it's still a thing i guess in 2020 it, you know you One. know it, it brings me back to the uh you, you more know importantly me. more importantly what were you doing on a party bus and was everybody masked how dare you this is no time for partying it brings me back to that Chappelle bit in his second special white people when their friends pass out yeah and he's like, man, you guys do some Chappelle, you know, is always my favorite comic. I believe this was his 2004 special or 2005. Was that killing them softly or was that his first special? I think that was the second, but I don't. Yeah, I think killing them softly. That was one in San Francisco. That was the second one, right? Yeah. At the Fillmore. Yeah. And uh, the killing them softly was the first. Oh, OK. And uh, oh, I know. yeah, this was the one on Showtime. OK. Um. But anyway, re- regardless, uh, you know the bit I'm talking about. It's yeah. really funny where he's talking about like white people when their friends pass out uh, for what it's worth. Yeah, 2004. That was the special. They always do some uh, some like pseudo gay shit like Steve passed out. So I shoved a carrot up his ass. Yeah. Like, and it's true as a like guy, especially on his face. Yeah. As a guy who was in a fraternity, like everything is very gay. Uh, we know. Um, the, but my thing is like, I wonder, like my fear, I guess would be if this was happening today, it would be like, Oh my God, is this guy going to wake up? And now there's this picture of me, you know, doing something to him. And now like, suddenly I'm, I'm a criminal. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I feel like that's the thing you got to worry about these days as opposed to like, you know, you draw okay, a dick I- on somebody's head in 1997. No one blinked. Okay, I'll pose this. Here's what I'll say. There's definitely either been a charges pressed or a lawsuit brought against somebody who drew a dick on someone's forehead while they were passed out. Okay, then at this point, at this point, then I'm going to pose this this question because this actually segues into a discussion I had with my college buddies in St. Louis last week. We got in like a huge discussion and it was a debate at dinner. Socially distanced dinner, by the way, you had to wear a mask when you left the table to get into the restaurant. There's only so many seats for anybody who's caring. Ah, anyway, no, um, I said, and I've said this forever, you know, I graduated in school in 2005, my friends, 2004, the iPhone came out in 2007, it changed everything. I've said that forever. It changed everything. And it did. I said the shit that we did in school from 2000 to 2005 could not be done. All that dumb shit we did. And my buddy said, I think. My other buddy was disagreeing. He goes, I think there's still a whole group that still does that in college. I go, there's not. No way. I said, because of these. I I, I said, I said, dude, you, digital cameras were like a thing. Like girls. I mean, would, think, just think about yeah. the people on like, think about it. Let, let me just put it this way. So many people are so concerned with like their life, their life going forward. People going about like, I mean, you, we have now, this is something that like, we deal with I'm, I'm we're not famous by any means but like just having a platform and just having like a big twitter feed and just whatever the amount of n- anonymous trolls that say horrible like criminal borderline criminal things to us on the internet and then we just go you're a troll you don't even have to it's like well just because my you know just because i have a real job you're going okay so you're a monster but you're concerned with how it might look at work. Like the fact that the, some of the worst vile people are concerned with, you know, their social media footprint tells you everything, you know, if you're just like a regular person, you're going, yeah, I'm not letting you take a picture of that. I, I agree. That's, that's where I'd like to know. And obviously we have a lot of young listeners. Like, I just don't think the shit that I did or we, like, I just don't think it goes on in colleges anymore. You can't just drop your pants. You can't walk into the laundry room naked. You 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 can't teabag your buddy. You just you can't do it. You can't take a dump in an unattached toilet in the middle of the hallway of your Walsh dormitory sophomore year. Not that I did it allegedly. I'm just saying. You can't do it. 
And that's why I have deemed I am the greatest generation. Forget the World War II guys. I am the greatest generation because we were the last generation to get away with that shit. Anyway, give us a ring. 310-359-8365. That is the hotline. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Dirty Sports. Drop an iTunes review. Leave that Twitter, Instagram handle. Or email me, andyruther45 at gmail.com. And I will send you two koozies courtesy of us. Joe, I know you got to get to the pool. Anything else? At Joe Prano on Instagram, at uh, Fix Your Life on Twitter, at Joe Prano on everything else, and uh, no, that's all I got. Oh, and if you're down in, um, if you're down in uh, the San Diego area, bring a mask and check out the Grand Comedy Club. And if you're not, do a very a way more COVID safe uh, thing and uh, get my comedy special on Amazon Prime because we know every single person has Amazon these days. So get it. I have, uh, I just put it up there after so long being on Vimeo on demand, I put it on Amazon. So there was, there was thousands of reviews from dirt balls on the original platform. But now that I've tried to make it a little bit more universally free, there's well, now that it's brand new to Amazon, there's only one review. So dirt balls, if you can't, you know, if you've already watched it at the very least review the special, that's it. That's my plug for the day. All righty. Have a great weekend. Dirt balls. We'll be back Monday. And as always, stay-